Who is Dr. Destroyer? 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 I am Dr. Destroyo. From the Death by Media Man podcast show, it's Dr. Destroyo. The story of the world's first true supervillain. We're telling Dr. Destroyo in sequence every two weeks. So if you haven't listened to the first episodes, go back and start there. Then, this will all make a lot more sense. Chapter 55 Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I have your attention for just a few moments? It's a little before eight in the evening on one of the busiest pedestrian streets downtown, right in the center of downtown, out front of the big art gallery. Students, tourists, business people, and disenfranchised homeless folks are amongst just a few of the social groups that can be identified moving up and down the boulevard. Beyond them, there's slackers, zealots, criminals, authority figures, and countless other classes and categories of humans all merging and breaking apart from each other on the block. A veritable stew of humanity, mingling and coexisting like a bunch of sweaty mammals who don't care to spend much time around each other. On the steps leading up to the art gallery is a man. On the man on the steps is a mask. I am Dr. Destroyo, the masked man says, and I am making this very special public appearance to give you people a message. Where did he come from? What does he want? The crowd of walkers slows to hear what he has to say. A handful of people start using the cameras and their phones to record what may be an odd moment of live theater. More than a few people in the crowd seem to know who he is, and those people seem a little startled, or almost a little scared. While some are merely anticipating some form of a simple street show, others appear aware that the name used by the figure before them is a potential portent of some form of disaster or death. I am the focal point, the figurehead of a new era birthed into a world of meta-violence and indelible rhetoric, Dr. Destroyo says loudly. His suit is dark gray and a little loose around his shoulders. His dress shirt is white and his tie is black. The crowd stares at him. Nobody says anything. A few people are slightly amused. A few more appear a little offended and a little confused. Look alive, piggies! Dr. Destroyo exclaims brashly. This is a key moment and you should all remember that you are here. This is something special you should work to recall as your otherwise meaningless years trickle by. This is when your useless little lives got lit up by the brilliance of a proper post-atomic man. The crowd twitches nervously, or maybe they're just bored. They're looking a little darkly at the scene, but he's going to start losing them if he can't turn up the heat awfully quick. And then, across the street, there's another figure. Hey, calls out the stranger. Fuck you, Dr. Destroyo. His voice betrays him, coming out as more of a squeak than a roar. Nevertheless, there he stands. Oh, Dr. Destroyo calls back. Would you look at this motherfucker? The doctor's voice is far smoother and more confident. He knows who he is. He's got no doubts. And who are you supposed to be? He calls out to his detractor. I'm the solution, says the man across the street, and you could almost sort of believe it. His costume is reddish black, and his mask covers his entire face. The suit looks expensive and well made. It's thick, like bullet-resistant material cloaked in leather. 
The crowd titters a bit, quite sure that now they're in for some crazy public theater. The presence of the solution and his well-made costume makes a lot of them less edgy and more excited. Out in the crowd, there's only a few glimpses of true fear, or at least nervous apprehension. The solution, says Dr. Destroyo, with disdainful skepticism, and then he throws back his head and lets out a long, crazy laugh. <laughs> you have to really go for it if you're going to let loose with a long, crazy laugh. You can't wuss out halfway. You have to set out to shatter the sky. You have to laugh like you're not scared to ruin the whole day. You're a criminal and a piece of garbage, the solution says, crossing the street. The crowd parts to let him through, and the heroically garbed, masked man makes his way to the base of the stairs. The doctor stands at the top of the stairs, looking down at everyone. It's a pretty good visual metaphor for where they're at from an evolutionary perspective. The solution is the start of something. The Alpha. And Dr. Destroyo is the end of all things. The Omega. The hero is such a simple little life form, and the villain is so complicatedly intricate. I've heard your bullshit, the solution says, sounding a little more honest now, and I'm sick of it. You're a fucked up bastard, and you're not going to hurt anybody else here tonight. Oh, Dr. Destroyo asks curiously, like it's a matter of professional courtesy. I'm not? No, the solution snarls. You're not. And he takes a step up the stairs. Just get the fuck out of here. Go be pathetic and crazy somewhere else. Make me, Dr. Destroyo snaps back with all the cleverness of a grade school argument on the playground. At this point, Dr. Destroyo pulls out a big orange ray gun. It's made of plastic and detailed with cool, shiny decals. It looks like something you'd use to play video games, like the sort of gun you could duck hunt with, but fancier. It's the gun a spaceman from the 1950s would have used to hunt aliens across the dusty red plains of Mars. It's a weapon from another world. The solution laughs. You crazy fucker, he says with a sneer. You think you can threaten these people with your toys while I'm around? You get the hell out of here. Don't tell me what to do, the doctor snarls. The script's given way to improv, and that's not going so well. If one of them lets fly with an, oh yeah, they're going to look like a couple of idiots. Maybe even more than they do already. With grave determination, the solution climbs the stairs. The doctor just watches and seems almost to be laughing right up until the solution ascends the final step. Then there's a strange, awkward moment as they stand there in front of each other, neither seeming sure about taking the next action. They're teenagers at a dance, too nervous to bust a move. And then... And then there's a sudden moment of subdued action as the solution leans in and punches Dr. Destroyo right in the gut. It's an entirely unanticipated move. There's no poetry to it. The solution just walks up to Dr. Destroyo and socks him in the stomach. Dr. Destroyo gasps and doubles over. The doctor loses his breath and almost his super cool ray gun, too. He sinks down towards the steps, curling in on himself as he tries to breathe. Everybody starts to laugh. Fuck you, Dr. Destroyo, calls out someone from the crowd. Yeah, get the fuck out of here, weirdo, says someone else. You should be ashamed of yourself. You fucking freak. Get lost. Loser. The doctor struggles to stand and stumbles a few steps back from the solution. The solution who still has his hands balled up into fists. He's ready for action. Look at the solution. Think about all the time and energy the solution must have spent doing push-ups and hitting on punching bags. All for this moment. Maybe he believes it now. Maybe this is all finally real for him now. Maybe it's real for everybody now. Maybe this is just what real life looks like now. You're a sick fucking murderer, the solution says, pointing a gloved finger at the doctor. And if you don't get out of here, I'm going to kick in your teeth and shove that mask straight up your ass. Under his own mask, Dr. Destroyo smiles. The solution isn't acting anymore. He's finally there. Here. 
everything has finally sunk in. He's arrived. He knows. He's ready to be a hero. He has chosen his own destiny, his own adventure. The solution has put himself right where he wanted to be, and now all he has to do is live with the weight of his dreams. I will beat your fucking skull in, the solution threatens. Not the most conventional of superhero threats. So you better just get the hell out of here. Hey man, Dr. Destro starts to say, why don't you? And then the solution hauls off and sinks a fist into the face of the doctor's mask. And the crowd cheers. For Dr. Destroyo, there's a flash of white light. And then when reality comes back, he can feel my nose starting to bleed under the mask. Everything goes all fuzzy for a moment, like you're sinking into deep water. Or maybe sand. Yeah, sinking into sand. Get the fuck out of here, the solution yells at the doctor, who stumbles back and away, still reeling from the blows to the stomach and face. You've won this time, Dr. Destroyo snarls, his mouth full of blood, but this isn't over. And then Dr. Destroyo turns and runs off to what would be stage left, just like they'd planned. Yeah, you see that? The solution calls out to the crowd, what a fucking pussy, am I right? And the crowd cries out in agreement. Fuck Dr. Destroyo, yeah? He calls out. And again, the crowd cries out in agreement. Fuck Dr. Destroyo, he shouts again. And the crowd echoes him back, stronger and louder. You can hear the words go bouncing up the block. Fuck Dr. Destroyo. The voices of the crowd are jubilant, triumphant, like they were the ones who just smashed some evil fucker in front of a big crowd. The people sound victorious, perhaps living out a vicarious thrill through the fists of their hero, their superhero, the solution. And naturally, half the crowd is recording everything on their phones or whatever. I am the solution, the solution cries out, and I will protect you people from the assholes in the darkness. Assholes like Dr. Destroyo. And the crowd cheers a bit for that, though it's not really the surging scream the solution was hoping for. But so what? That people even stuck around this long is impressive on its own. And you people, the solution cries out to them, you're the real heroes. And the crowd cheers back in agreement. And that's my cue, I decide as I hear it. That's when Dr. Destroyo comes back from wherever he'd run off to. Bright orange ray gun still in hand. Hey, fuckhead, Dr. Destroyo cries out because I can't think of anything really clever to say. I almost forgot about my superatomic death ray pistol. The gun is a bright shade of tangerine. It practically glows in the hands of Dr. Destroyo. The gun is a splash of color amongst the world of gray. The gray pavement, the gray buildings, the gray clouds in the sky, the gray suits and all the gray little lives that run up and down the gray cement of the city. Get the fuck out of here, loser, the solution says, and it sounds like he means it. It sounds like he really is the solution now. It has happened. Somehow the crowd turned him into this thing, despite the frailty of his alter ego. Maybe the encouraging sounds of the surrounding mob were like a lightning bolt from the gods, called out to transform the pathetic mortal into some sort of raging demi-deity, a half-human and half-immortal being of power and fury. Dr. Destroyo aims his weapon and squeezes the trigger. Salute this, the doctor says, which doesn't really make a lot of sense, but hey, he's the solution. And I'm Dr. Destroyo. The handgun goes off with a cataclysmic bang. The plastic ray gun shell seems to explode in my hand as the gun power ignites and a bullet rockets out of the barrel. The plastic shell shatters and falls to the steps of the art gallery in little broken pieces. And then things are quiet for a moment as the solution stands there making a strange little sound. A tiny droplet of blood trickles down the face of his mask. The hole in his mask is quite small. You'd be lucky if you could fit a dime through it. It's right in the middle of his forehead. 
A tiny droplet of blood slowly trickles down the face of the mask, leaving a little wet streak behind itself. For a moment, he just stands there, and then the body goes limp and falls to the ground. For a moment, I just stand there. I'm alone, under the sun. I'm alive in this moment. It's like music is playing somewhere and I'm the only one who can hear it. I can feel my blood as it travels through my veins. There is a stillness to the air and it's within me as well. A smoking gun is in my hand. And then the crowd starts screaming and I take off running. Chapter 56 A middle-aged man with graying hair and an even grayer suit sat behind a large blue desk. A downtown confrontation between two masked men ended with one man shot and another wanted by the police. Chicago resident Wayne Boudreau, also known as The Solution, died from a gunshot wound to the face following a public encounter with this city's own notorious resident, Dr. Destroyo. Tamara Jenkins spoke with eyewitnesses at the Downtown Art Gallery. The footage clicked over to a young woman standing near the Art Gallery steps. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm here downtown with a few of the people who witnessed the entire scene earlier today. Many people did record the event, and we will be showing that footage a little later, though we should warn that some viewers will find it extremely disturbing. Now obviously this has been a very traumatic day for everybody, but a few people were still willing to share their feelings and observations. A smug, good-looking guy with too much hair and teeth like dinner plates grinned wildly into the camera. Yeah, I saw it all. It was Dr. Destroyo. I remember him from the news before, those other killings? But when he showed up here, I just thought it was some sort of a, you know, like a street show or something. I didn't think it was really him. An older woman with a fake tan and too much jewelry frowned miserably. When they used the name, I just thought it was in bad taste. But then when the gun went off, well, I still thought they were just fooling around. I distinctly remember thinking, they can't just behave like that. They're going to get in trouble with the police. And then the shot went off. A young man with a high top fade and a big gold chain worn around his neck, his face hidden behind an enormous pair of shiny sunglasses. Yeah, I saw Dr. Destroyo and I knew it was going down, yo. He flashed out that ray gun and everybody was like tripping and fucking screaming and yelling like, please don't kill me, Dr. Destroyo, and like that. It was the shit, yo. A suburban mother was shaking visibly. I just kept thinking, am I going to see my children again? One moment everybody was cheering for that man, the solution, and the next moment he was... He was dead! In front of all those people! And nobody's told me who's gonna clean up the mess! Can you tell me that? Can you? Traumatic? Hell, from what I could see, these people loved being on TV. They were all obviously thrilled to have gotten to witness something so exciting and novel. And sure, the violence had clearly upset a few of them, but most seemed pretty happy for their experience. Or if not happy, then titillated, like from a roller coaster ride. They'd been galvanized, stimulated, and at least partially woken up. Hell, I bet a bunch of those spectators went home and had some of the best sex of their life that night. The people of the city had gotten to be part of a show. And a damn exciting show at that. They'd seen it with their own eyes, on their own streets. No need for screens or cameras. It was like the imaginary gods from the false world of the televised image had come through the screen to play in the lost lands of the living.
Dr. Destroyo is written and produced by Hank Pattison for the Death by Media Man podcast channel. You can subscribe to the Death by Media Man podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. If you enjoyed this, please leave us a like or a comment and tell a friend. And if you'd like to support the Death by Media Man channel with your money, there's a link to our Patreon in the description of this program. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you in two weeks for the next installment of Dr. Destroyo.